how's it going? I know I've been MIA for a very, very long time, but it's great to be back and I'm doing this look. I still haven't decided what I'm gonna call it, but it is a full face, full hair, makeup and hair tutorial. Since I've been gone for a very long time, I decided to go the whole nine yards and show you how it's all done. So if you'd like to find out how I, um, Managed to look like the way I do at this point. <laughs> then please keep watching. I'm gonna start off with my skincare routine and first I'm gonna apply my eye cream followed by my face moisturizer and the face moisturizer that I'm using is SPF 15 so it's great for day wear. For foundation, I'm going to use a full cover but lightweight product because I'm going to layer it with cream and powder contours so I don't want the base to be too thick else the makeup can look cakey. Then to blend everything, I'm going to use a wet beauty blender. This will also make sure that there are no streaks left behind from the brush. I'm going to use the contour stick from Sephora for contouring and I'm going to use it on the usual places, so the hollows of my cheeks, my forehead, my nose and finally my jawline. Now it's time to blend everything in and I'm using a round flat tip brush to blend my nose. And to blend it further, I'm going to use the mini beauty blenders from Sephora. Although these were primarily meant to blend under eye concealer, but I don't think it's practical at all for that purpose because of how small it is. I like to use it in smaller areas and I think the only place where I personally think it works best is for the nose contour. Then using a large angle brush, I'm gonna blend in the rest of the contour lines in a circular motion. And as you can see, I'm creating a number three. So starting from my jawline to the hollows of my cheeks to my forehead. It's exactly like a number three. Now it's time for concealer and this is a step I dare not miss because of my scary dark circles. So I'm going to apply a lavish coat in a triangular shape under my eyes. This is also partly because I like a really light under eye look. Then I'm going to apply some to the corner and around my lips because this helps shape my lips and demarcates the area uh, for when I will be lip lining later on. Other areas I would like highlighted would be the center of my forehead and the bridge of my nose. To blend the concealer, I'm using this new beauty blender from Glossy Makeup. I'm obsessed with this. Probably one of the best beauty blenders I've ever used. I've never really been a fan of the traditional teardrop shaped beauty blenders because I feel like they're very time consuming. But this one has a flat surface on one side, which makes uh, concealer blending super smooth and seamless and saves a ton of time. The Estee Lauder concealer that I've used is just genius because as you can see my skin looks so smooth and flawless and there's no sign of dark circles. Now to set the concealer I'm using a really light under eye powder because I like my under eye area nice and light and I'm also a bit OCD about my dark circles and I like to use the same light powder for my t-zone so that is the center of my forehead and my chin. To set the rest of my face, I like to use a powder which is either my exact skin tone or a tone darker. And this is uh, meant to be applied all over the face so that all the colors are blended in and there are no harsh lines between the contouring and the highlighting. This is meant to act as a blanket. Although with this step, it can slightly blur out the contouring and highlighting, which brings me to my next step. Next, I'm going to use a powder contour to really sculpt my face and to make sure that none of that powder has concealed my cream contour that I applied earlier. And I like a very heavily contoured face because when I put on weight, I tend to gain weight around my face quite a bit. So I use a dark powder to really chisel my cheeks and I have a large forehead. So I like to use the dark powder to narrow down the forehead and not make it look too large. And applying it on the jawline will help eliminate double chin. To sculpt my nose, I'm going to use a really thin angled brush and using the dark powder from the Kat Von D palette, I'm going to trace it in the corners of my nose. And to blend it in, I'm going to use that mini beauty blender once again. In case you're wondering why I'm repeating these uh, steps with the powder contour when we've already done this at the start with the cream contour, that's because of a very simple reason. As I mentioned earlier, I like a very heavily contoured look because it's very slimming, uh, but you don't need to do it twice. 
for highlighting, I'm going to use the light shade from my Kat Von D palette. And using a pencil top brush, I'm going to highlight the bridge of my nose like this. After that, I'm going to grab a regular eyeshadow brush and highlight the corners of my nose just outside the contour lines. This will give it that really nice, slender nose job effect. That finishes the contouring. I'm going to go ahead and fill in my brows. And all my life, I've only ever used eyebrow pencils. It's only recently that I've switched to brow powder. And honestly, I would never go back to pencil because sometimes with eyebrow pencils, it can look like I've drawn my eyebrows with a Sharpie. Whereas with um, powder brows, I feel like it gives a very natural brow finish. I'm going to complete my eye makeup and I'll be right back. For the rest of my face, just because I'm a little bit pale, I'm going to use a bit of bronzer and I'm going to apply to the areas I contoured earlier. Now it's time for highlighting and I'm using one of my recent favorite products, which is a liquid illuminator. I'm going to apply that to the tops of my cheeks, exactly where my cheekbone is. And using a beauty blender, I'm going to blend it out. I like to use a liquid illuminator first before applying my powder highlighter because I feel like it holds the powder highlighter longer and I'm gonna take this champagne pop uh, highlighter which is a Jaclyn Hill edition from Becca Cosmetics and I'm gonna apply to the same places we applied the liquid illuminator. For blush I'm using a nice bronzy shade and the reason I like to apply blush after highlighter is because I feel like sometimes my highlighter doesn't stick if I've already got blush on. Alright guys, so I'm going to stop part one of this video right here, otherwise it's going to be super long. I just wanted to show you guys my foundation contouring and highlighting routine. If you'd like to watch part two, I'll show you how I did my eye makeup, my lipstick and of course my hair tutorial using hair extensions. So I'll put the link to that in the description bar. In the meanwhile, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please like and share this video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.